When I first saw this story, I was like, this man is crazy. But he's not Jamaican. Let me go look it up. But he's actually Jamaican. I guess I'm still trying to find the good in Jamaican people, even though they are doing craziness. But let's get into this story. It says, according to the arrest warrant affidavit, Acosta Ferguson and Keeley were in a relationship. Police located Keeley's burnt out car on a country road in Fresco with no evidence of Keeley. But they say they have evidence that Ferguson was the last person with her and they found some disturbing evidence inside his car. Keeley friends told Collin County deputy she had a boyfriend at the time and she recently became upset after finding out he was married. The suspect admitted to authorities he used a fake name when talking to Keeley but will not disclose where she could be. Tuesday, investigators were spotted searching a field across from Keeley's McKinney home. The pair went on to comb through a creek nearby and then a densely wooded private road. It is not confirmed that investigators were out looking for Keeley but it's still a mystery where she may be. An arrest affidavit obtained by Fox 4 on Tuesday reveals an illicit affair between Keeley and Ferguson right before she disappeared. According to investigators, she only recently found out he was married. He never even told her his real name. On January 11th, Keeley's friends and co-workers reported her missing to the Collin County Sheriff office after not hearing from her for several days the next day frisco police found keely's vehicle on a deserted con country <sighs> the next day frisco police found keely's vehicle on a deserted country road in fresco according to investigators the car had been burnt beyond recognition and the incident was not consistent with a natural fire so they think it's arson Deputies then went to Keeley McKinney duplex for a welfare check. Keeley was not home, but her dog was. It didn't have any food or water. Detectives then went through Keeley's phone records, pointing them to a conversation with Ferguson, who went by the name Kevin Brown. They later found his Lexus parked near Keeley's home. According to court records, a search warrant was conducted on the vehicle and gloves, duct tape, and a blanket were inside. What do you need gloves, duct tape, and a blanket for? If you watch any kidnapping movie, those are their go-to tools. Tollgate records obtained by investigators shows Keeley vehicle traveling north on Dallas North Tollway at 11.56 a.m. on January 10th near El Dorado Parkway in Fresco. Later that same day around 7 p.m., Keeley's phone was last pinged at Fresco Work in Dallas area. On January 13, investigators showed up to Ferguson workplace and spoke to him. According to investigators, Ferguson admitted to knowing Keeley and the last time he saw her was Tuesday, January 10th when she dropped him off for work around noon. That statement matched evidence collected from cell phone records. Ferguson claimed his car was at Keeley's house because he was hiding it from his wife and he allowed deputies to look through his phone. They saw a text conversation where she threatened to tell his wife about the affair. Tell wife about affair, Keely did a play with fire. If he knows anything about Jamaican men, some of them will go to the ends of the earth to cover up their lies. Kill, murder, pillage, plunder, whatever they have to do to protect that lie, they're going to do it to protect it. Investigators say for also admitted he lied to Keeley about his name since they started dating last summer to keep from getting caught. Ferguson's wife was interviewed. She told detectives she got a text message from an unknown number advising they need to tell her something. She said she never responded and when detectives asked to see her phone, it was broken. Fox 4 visited Grand Perry home shared by Ferguson and his wife on Monday but there was no answer. Eventually, investigators collected evidence placing Ferguson in the general area where Keeley's burnt out car was found, but he denied being in that area and wouldn't tell them where Keeley was. 
Ferguson was placed in custody and charged with kidnapping. His bond is set at $1 million. Fox 4 also found out through public records that Ferguson is not a U.S. citizen. He is listed as a Jamaican citizen. However, it's unclear what his current immigration status is in the U.S. According to Ferguson, booking information, and he's only allowed. I don't know why when these men come to America, they turn in such nightmare. You have your wife at home. No one is perfect. No relation is perfect. But you go create a whole new life living a whole double life in the united states the double life thing may work in jamaica but in the united states of america is not going to work people have way too much access to information now and they have access to everything at their fingertips so the double life thing is not going to work and quite honestly i feel like he killed her because she can't be found up till now. And that was from January. So, when them say, be careful who you bring come a foreign, be careful who you date a foreign also. Because this girl lost her life. And she was also playing with fire. If you knew that this man is married, why continue a relationship with him? Are you that desperate for a man? Is there no other else man in and around your area that you can date? Like, what is going on? I don't know what's up with Jamaican men unaliving the woman they are with or the woman they're married to or the woman that's their side chick. I don't know if it's a mental health thing or it's the Gallus culture that is promoted in our culture, whether that be true music or just culture but this is getting out of hand with an yard abroad and the same thing keeps happening this whole toxic masculinity thing where they think it's okay to cheat or if they get cheated on they should take someone's life it's not okay we as Jamaican people need to check the culture and check what we're teaching our sons and our daughter because this is getting out of hand. And quite frankly, my kids, even though that they are born in America, I'm sure they're going to identify as Jamaican. And I don't want this be the legacy that they identify with. I want them to identify with the cool, cool, calm, and collective culture of loving nice people. Loving nice people, not only to white people or to tourists, but loving nice people to each other, period. The people that do well, whether that be in athletics, academia, or anywhere we choose to put ourselves, we put ourselves there because we know we're going to be excellent. This not cut it at all. Anyways, this story I had to bring to you guys. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Leave your comments in the comment section below. And Jamaican men, y'all need to fix up. Because what the hell? Deuces.